Right, so <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. Uh, we'll um, look it up. Okay, so a couple of little children. Uh, we're starting in the middle, going towards the balance point, and the main reason it's so difficult is the bow control distribution and the actual bowing, but also the notes are not easy to remember either. a song with words for each piece but I do think these words help them to then do the right thing um, it can also be useful for them if they're not good at remembering words which I'm really not so I you know I uh, identify just even singing to La and doing the right bowing in the air is a really great well even starting to sing to da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da just being able to sing it through Quite a lot of my students do a singing credit like that for the early pieces. Some of them do it for all of book one. Um, it's really helpful to have that singing, not to check their singing voice, but because it shows you whether they have internalized the piece or not. So then you know when they're having trouble playing it, if, it's, if you don't know whether they can sing it or not, you don't know whether the trouble they're having playing it is because they don't know it by ear or because they can't work out how to make it sound right. So if they don't know it by ear and you think it's because they can't work out how it goes, then you're going to be, you know, barking up the wrong tree, basically. So for as a people, you do mostly sing the... Yeah. So the singing that I do, the words I use for this piece, Oh Come Little Children's Song, is up, down, then down, up, is the... Don't write it down because I've got it. Uh, up, down, then down, up is the right way to bow. Up, down, once again, then you make the bow slow. Up bows are quite hard, but I think I can do. Up, down, every time in the right place like you. <laughs> so it's very cute because they all want to be like their teachers, right? And so then, and it also means that they get that up, down in the words as well as in the air. 
Uh, the words are written out underneath the video of it on YouTube. So if you, if someone would like to go to YouTube right now and find and cut and paste into the group chat, that would be helpful. Thank you, Jackie. Jackie's on it. Excellent. So it might take them a couple of weeks to learn how to do the bowing in the air and sing the song right. And as long as you've started early enough, that doesn't make them feel like they've been on that piece for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, so that's another reason that starting in well in advance is a really good idea. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> So the, uh, I'm going to be very big in here, but Fine. I'll keep on this time. Yeah, no time. problem. You said, oh, can we help children start doing the song of the way? Uh, I yeah. understood it correctly. So and at the latest, at the same time as Go Tell Aunt Rody. And so also Go Tell Aunt Rody. So three of them together, basically. No. So they're working on Song of the Wind. <laughs> And maybe the song for Come Little Children. Oh, okay. Or Go Tell Aunt Rody and the song for, Goes, for oh, Come Little Children. Okay. Don't start them all at once, they'll be overwhelmed. Oh, yeah, okay, so you can change the Go Tell Aunt first or, or oh, Come Little Children first. I don't think we've understood. I think what they're saying is to sing the song, not playing it in the way. The song that she's just sung. Start so they're singing, singing and bowing in the air. Oh, That's okay. all they're learning right now either while they're learning how to play Song of the Wind, working for a credit. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the credit thing? Yeah? Yes, I'm trying to understand. Okay, so either during that, so if you have a student and they come and they say, I can play Song of the Wind, mm -hmm. and you hear it and they play it nicely, but for example, they've got the retakes wrong. Mm -hmm. So they need another week on that song mm -hmm. to play for a credit. But you can say, okay, you're doing so well on Song of the Wind, it's really close to being ready for a credit, so I'm going to teach you a new thing. This is the song and the bowing in the air for O Come Little Children. So what I mean that they are actually doing is this. Up, down, bend, down, up is the right way to bow, all the way through the song. So no violin. Okay, I yeah? understand. Just, just the and, then, and then in the next lesson, They'll play you Song of the Wind, hopefully it's fine, you give them a credit, and you say, okay, great, let's hear the song, and they maybe are singing the words right, but the bow is wrong, or they're doing the bowing right, but the words are wrong, or something, and you say, okay, fine, keep working on that, and now we start Go Tell Aunt Rody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes. Great. So there is a set of steps during Go Tell Aunt Rody, exercises that you want to do for preview for O'Connor children. So they have the song, whether they've got the credit for the song or not doesn't really matter, but when they're on Go Tell Aunt Rody, you've just practiced, okay, can you do 10 of these for me each day at home? That's it. Super simple, but they've never started on an up bow before, except by accident. <laughs> And then it depends, sorry, let me give you time. You are definitely more busy than me. I am, but I don't have very much battery, so I, we oh. might have to change to a phone. Because okay. of a thief so, so in the building. Because it's very similar also, bar four with different knobs. Oh no, it's not. Okay, so just, just E, E thing. Yeah, that's the first step. So I suggest that you just make a list, set like on a Word document, mm. of pre, um, preview steps for Ocom Little Children. Mm -hmm. And you write, number one, sing the song and bow in the air. And then underneath that you, you put, start during Song of the Wind or during Go Tell Aunt Rody. E, e, up, down. Ten times each practice. Make sure they know that it's not just the sound <laughs> that they have to reset. Start at the middle, give them a sticker. Start again. And that the parent knows that they must do that sort of half retake.
Your keyboard makes such cute little noises. <laughs> <laughs> like a um, guinea pig. <laughs> so we yay. Second one will be so the first is the song and the bowing in the air. Yeah. The second one is E E. Mm. Ten times each practice. The third one is the first line of the song, but all on open E. So they sing up down then up is the right way to bow, and they stop on their sticker. And that means that they can then do it again without resetting the bow. It's just about getting the Boeing to do that yeah. pattern. This is a piece that is fascinating to teach in terms of what different children find easy and what find hard. Very occasionally you'll just get someone who comes and is like, I watched the video and I can do it, and you can give them the credit straight away. Unbelievable. <coughs> Brilliant. Lucky them. Lucky you. Most of the time there's something they really struggle with, and for different children it will be something different. So some of them will struggle to either sing and play at the same time or sing the words in their head and play at the same time. Some of them will find that really easy and then find it difficult to coordinate their bowing to put the notes in, which is the next step. And then you might just practice it like that, just with the twos added, or you might do the whole box straight away. That's what I mean by taking it at the child's pace. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, you will have the first line, apart from the last note, as a repetition box. Okay, what was the four again, sorry? The, the four. So number one, sing and play, and sing a bow in the air. Number two, EE. -E. Number three, play all of this first line except the last note on open E. But he's already on Okamura to the... Probably by now, because Gotan already is not very hard. But it doesn't really matter. So what do you do to, to, to make sure it's, it's right? Sure. Um, um, Song of the Wind, we sing and go in the air. Yeah. Uh, we, so it will be during this, we will do that. And then when we come here, then will be me. During the talent ready. The E E is up during the talent. Yeah, because cool. cool. it's just a box. It takes twenty seconds to do the whole thing. Mm. Okay, and then. And then if they haven't finished the talent ready, but they're ready to do the whole box with the fingers, fine. Cool. So how many steps is that? Four. We are four. Three. Four. Three. We did three. Yeah. So three, so one bow and sing in the air, yeah. sing and bow in the air. <laughs> Two E, three, the first, the first line, line all on E, four with the fingers. Ah. The box as oh. Oh. as it comes in the actual music. The first line with the fingers. Oh. First line except the last note, the first phrase. Oh, I thought it was Well, it's from the so on before on the, the first line. note yeah. to after the crotchet at the end of that line. Do they sing the song or are they just playing it? No, they're just playing it now. Except for the last note. Except for the last note of the line. Oh, okay. So the box is this. Start at your special sticker. Stop at your special sticker. One, hooray! It's not an echo. If you look at the dynamics, it's not an echo. 
Um, sorry, what am I talking about? The second part, you mean the second line? Yes. Which is an echo, sorry. I thought you meant the third line. No, no. The, like the B section. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, so, uh, I wouldn't worry about the dynamics in this piece until about Allegro, oh. if not Allegretto, if not Kovacek. Like, there's so much in it. You just want the bones. <laughs> you can put the details on later. Okay, any questions so far? Um, Jackie, could you just grab your gun and I just want to show you a thing that you can show the parents to really help with the bow control and distribution. So you have your special sticker. Let's just get myself out of the way of the video. Right, so what you can show to the to the parent is once they can play the first line, so I'll sing, you play. Up, down, 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 up, just show them that they can stop the bow mm -hmm. or they can put their hand here that's probably better so mm -hmm. it's slightly less um, annoying for the child and then they just put their hand here so that if they try and do a down bow try and do a down bow you just feel yeah. oh it doesn't work and then you remember oh yeah and you're not really aware mm -hmm. that the parents done it for you it's much better than them just going yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that can work on either open e version or the full thing okay yeah thank you thank you Okay, and then, so by this point, we're imagining that they've probably got their credit for Botel Up Rody. Or they're very close. And then the next box that I would give them, and hopefully this is ready as the first box is good enough to not do as a box. Because these children are quite young. And for them to do the whole first line as a box and the whole last line as a box, which is what I'm going to say is going to happen next, is a lot in one practice. Mm -hmm. If you imagine Julian trying to do this, he would be like, no more boxes. And that would be completely acceptable. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they've got the first line enough. You can say, okay, you've done so brilliantly. Rub out the box, rub out the times five and say, okay, the other bit that's really tricky in this, in this piece is the last line plus extra note. <laughs> Special sticker starting on the special so sticker. A, a new box. A new box it. instead of the first box, okay. not as well. structure is the first line and the second line are the same and then the third and the fourth line are different well not the first you know the first phrase and the second phrase it's a good time to teach them the word phrase I think because then it helps with this annoying line issue and then halfway through the upper half and wherever their tip is. So for some kids, they're going right to the tip, that's fine. Other kids, they'll probably be going, uh, oh, in fact, for this piece, you don't need the tip. So balance point, middle, upper, halfway through the upper half. 
because they're using half of the bow but from the quarter point to the three quarter point. So they're not using below the balance point and they're not using above the last, the top quarter. Does that make sense? Yes. But I have a question then. Why does the, why does the line lag an echo as well? No, no, not an echo, a box as well. Because it's, because it's easy. Ah, oh, okay. It's easy for them. One, 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 three, 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 two, 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 one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's not very real, not very solid. It's interesting. Balance point, middle of the upper half and middle. So you're starting in the middle and finishing in the middle on every phrase. I just draw a little sign like this to show it's a mountain piece so that they can sort of see oh. it in their book. Mm -hmm. Makes them feel better about it being really hard and taking a while extra. <coughs> If you haven't explained that Dr. Suzuki was a teacher who worked out that if you are always struggling and learning a new thing, your rate of progress is actually lower than if you struggle to learn something new that's difficult and then you have some easier pieces mm -hmm. and then you struggle again and then you have some easier pieces that actually, it's a bit like you were saying about what's, this, what's the shape of progress. If you plot it on a chart, this is the ABRSM, and uh, you know, we're at the start of the line, grade one, grade two, grade three, blah, blah blah. And actually, Suzuki is like, you know, the twinkles are really hard. Long and Dr. Suzuki is harder than the rest of them, and then lightly worry, easy. And then some of them may be quite tricky, and then go to like really easy, and then oh my god, I can't believe children do so hard. And then Mason and Omolongo and Allegro are all just quite easy. But the point is that if we plot a line through this, which is the eventual progress, uh, could someone just turn the computer to this way, please? If you plot that line, it's going to be steeper and incline than the ABR7 version. So overall, they're going to learn faster, much more importantly than how quickly they learn. They're going to have a much nicer time because this is all fun. Oh, this is hard. This is fun. Oh, this is hard. This is fun, 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 fun. And then as soon as you're here, you are also doing all of this again, but you have made this come down here because you've practiced it, so it's no longer so much harder. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once again, we have rubbish to our markers. Suzuki, <laughs> how can I Okay. So, um, by the time they have done the first box until they need not do it every practice as a repetition box anymore, they've done the last line as a box, and then you send them and say, okay, work out the third line, and they're ready to start trying for credit. For me, this piece is so tricky, and we have the benefit of always teaching review. I do not, you know, as long as their bow goes up and then up again, they get their credit. Like if I have a child who plays, for example, like this. Is anyone else really hot? No. Not Perimenopause. <laughs> Sticker and then keep going. Uh, 
we would say, in review, let's see if you can always make it on the spot, or on the sticker, but this piece is hard enough to finish. <laughs> so I would not recommend making it any harder. <clears throat> and as part of that, the tick boxes that I put at the top are literally just bowing, memory, and boxes. If you have a child who plays out of tune and you normally put intonation, you have to judge whether that child is robust enough to also have intonation for this piece or whether you just need to drop it and bring it back when they're on something easier and bring it back when they review this piece, at which point, of course, you can be more fussy about the things that they're looking to fix. Bowing, memory and? Boxes. Bowing, memory. Boxes. That's why we didn't finish it last time, is because it takes a full half an hour to do this piece, even though it's only four lines of music. Uh, any questions about it? Great. And then hopefully you will avoid having a child, every child of yours be on this for like half a term, maybe even a whole term, like I did when I started teaching it. But that awful. No, no good for anyone. Just a terrible, terrible situation for everyone. Okay, then when they finish, or if they haven't finished it, but they can play it through, it's not taking a whole load of time in their practice, they just need to keep focused. You can teach them the delight that is doing twinkles starting on D. They're super excited to play on the D string. They may well have done it already in group. They know that they're getting ready for long, long ago, and it's really easy for them. So that's a really nice thing. Just put it at the bottom. Now teach Twinkles in D after I come little children. And because it's there, if they are, you know, sort of grinding to a halt but not quite ready to keep going, you can get it, give it to them early. why we start on A and E is because... I worked with them like that, but yeah, first time I saw the in Suzuki they do it from A. It's more sensible because it's easier. Yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, because if you start on D and A, both strings are like so difficult to play by themselves. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> you said to twinkle one D strings, right? Yes. How you do them, how many credits you offer them, whether you do them, make them do all of them, whatever, it's up to you. But just do something on DNA from the twinkles. Okay. Ready? Yes. Page 30, don't ignore it. So preparation for number preparation number one in A major for tonalization. Practice the plucking. They like to learn plucking. They've done it in Pop Goes the Weasel. Now they get to practice it on different strings. And then see if you can get the same ring sound on the next. I don't get them to practice this, we just do it in the lesson as an exercise. Mm. I'm probably guilty of ignoring it myself many times. A major scale I do not ignore because it is very important. And they learn that A major arpeggio. But we use B and C as an exercise one-off. And I think it's useful for them to start looking at the music. And I don't have a problem if I write in the fingers for them. So sight reading is nowhere near ready to actually sight read all of these jumps and skips. Mm -hmm. um, but just looking at the music and seeing, you know, even just on a very basic level, oh, the notes are going, heads are going up, and notes are getting higher. Just as an aside, you do need to be very clear to non-musical parents and to the kids that the stem does not tell the kid whether the note is higher or lower than the note before. Mm. So, for example, some children looking at A 
the arpeggio. Mm -hmm. We'll look at the stem and see that it's going up, and then look at the next note. Stem is going down, so it must be lower. So these are just for the head. Exactly. And then just put a little circle around the questions teachers and parents should ask every day. Are the students listening to the CD at home every day? Or the recording, obviously. Has the tone improved? Is the intonation correct? I mean, correct intonation. What do we mean by that? <laughs> but, you know, is the, is the intonation good? Has the proper playing posture been acquired? Is the bow being held correctly? And then I would like you to write, is there joy? Because I consider that to be extremely important. Can you explain again what you were saying about the scene going up and I didn't quite get to that. About the stem. The stem as well. This thing. So looking at this, there is the head and that's the stem. Oh, the line. Okay. The lines, yes. So some kids will look at this and go, okay, that's open A. This must uh, be lower because it's going down. I see. So they need to have their attention drawn to the head. It's like a music line game, you know, they have a thing, they can oh, up, down, up, down, and also, yeah, yeah, that's good for the older audition. Yeah, it's good. And for the A major scale and arpeggio, it's helpful to use the finger patterns, um, you know, the red, blue, yellow, the hot pink, three chart. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, the one that you got there, yes. So just to point out that we are in, yes, thank yeah. you, that we are in red finger pattern for this. Mm. They don't know anything except red finger pattern, but it's just very clear as they practice the scale. Oh, you know, there's two and three, and then there would be the four, or we're going to use <laughs> To give them a visual aid. Yeah. Okay, any questions about page 30? dragging their heels on O'Connell children, you can do this as preview during O'Connell children, but given that if they are dragging their heels you will have done all of that last page that we just discussed, mm -hmm. if they're still not getting it there's a problem and you need to work out what that problem is. Mm -hmm. So usually we start Mason when they finish either O'Connell children or this page as well mm -hmm. and this is how we start it, but it can be preview the bit I'm about to show you. Let's play Mason. And 
you know, if they're having trouble, they're playing like this maybe. Or, or whatever, then you just stop there and you say, okay, that's the box I want you to do this week. But most of them will be ready to go straight into. And you do that back and forth five times maybe. And then as if by magic, they've learned the first bar by just adding the three. And they're like, oh my God, I didn't know I could play that. Or I knew I could play that, I've been doing it for weeks. <laughs> your notes on one side annotated and then the explanation of what you're going to do on a separate page for your teaching points folder because there's not enough space to just squeeze in all of these so after, exercises. after this like after this should we add like a blank page to, to yeah so i would make a um you know we talked about making a template that yeah. had left hand right hand structure general musicianship yeah Anyway, you have that list somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Then you just fill them in as you always start from that same template and just fill it in as you go for each piece. Structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why don't I find it was from you? Yeah, if anyone can send me what they done. Yeah, we, we, um, at the end of term, basically, you know, we wrote everything. Oh, at the end of term, not yeah. last week, because we cancelled last week. Yeah, yeah, and um, after, because I, I looked everywhere, I can't find the papers that I wrote. What, what, what is it? The everything Let's we do wrote that. after open middle children. Oh, I can send it there. Okay, thank you. So then the second bar, I also teach them just this is how it goes. You put the one, you tap the three. They're very used to this from Song of the Wind. So then we just do copycats. Easy peasy, and then they just play the E. And then they've got the first two bars perfectly. And then we repeat this whole process for bar three. So they don't need to do this, because it's the same, but this different string crossing for bar three than bar one. Twinkle. 
chord apart from that E. So lots of them will just will just do it. But if they're playing and they can't, they haven't got the thing, then we work on keeping it more on its tippy toes. And if they've got a fake finger, really fat fingers and really skinny violin neck, they might just need to to lift it. So I just take that, you know, child by child. Okay. So it's not a requirement? No, not for me. Other teacher trainers would have me shot. <laughs> but you know, we all have to do what we think is right. And then you can have a very lovely moment where you say to your students, oh my goodness, look here, it says also play the twinkle variation starting on the D string. But you are so advanced, you've been doing that for ages. And they like that. What's the time? The here it says also play the twinkle variations in D. Go mm. lower. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so you can say to the student, oh, it says that we're supposed to be doing this, but you are already doing it. Yeah. Because you're so brilliant. Woo! but I wouldn't bother with the extra inversions etc. Wow. Do you mean to basically do it at the same time, D and A? Probably, yeah. Or maybe you could do D. Or a bit later, it's up to you but it's easy for them because they just go over a string. Yeah. We're not teaching them about time signatures, it's none of that sort of theory yeah. stuff. I just love the first time chord comes to play A major scale actually. I well, I hope not, no, I mean, if they yeah, haven't done it. Hmm. Yeah. It's the first time it's specifically recommended, but most people do it for four twinkles even. Hmm. And if they haven't, it's very easy for them. Hmm. If, if they have, yeah. Okay, and then to finish, hooray, let's play Mason and Twinkle Theme Duet, which works very nicely. Well, for credits, this one. Oh yeah, the tick boxes. So okay, my mistake. Uh, so rhythm, bow distribution, string crossing, and echo, and then whatever else you need to always add for your students. So you say that again. The last bit or the boxes? Oh, boxes. Uh, bow distribution, rhythm, echo, and string crossing. Irem, do you have time just to play it through with the twinkle or not? Up to the performance that we did. If you have to go, yes, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Just listen, listen while while we play. Yes, I okay. So you two are going to play Mason, and I'm going to play Twinkle Theme. And you see, it's a very nice duet, and it's very nice to do in group lessons because it means they only need to be able to play Twinkle Theme, and they can play with the kids who are on Mason. So here's your introduction. When you do this in a group, I would recommend giving the introduction to May song, or you can just count in. And it's better if you have a if you have a strong student who's done it before, maybe in your lesson, you can put them at the front for whichever part you're not going to play.
this is your Allegro bowing. It's exactly right. They can be really tiny and be like, I'm learning the bowing for Allegro. And Allegro <laughs> makes some children. Oh, really? um, so it's a really nice one for um, play togethers, concerts, yeah. and groups. Okay, and the battery has just started to die.